Hey everybody, welcome back to Photorec.tv. I'm Toby, and I wish this was a clickbait title, but it's not. My account is gone. I want to talk to you about how it happened, some tips for you to avoid it in the future, and some tips for surviving it. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. It is so important, especially in light of this video, to have your own space for your work. I've been running my own site, photorec.tv, and my personal portfolio on Squarespace now for the last couple of years, and I am extremely happy. I love Squarespace and the ease of use and how gorgeous the pages look. You can try them out for free, no credit card required for 14 days. Just start at squarespace.com slash photorec.tv and you'll save 10% off. Uh, let's start with what happened, but quick background. I've been an Instagram user for I think about a decade. I honestly can't remember when I first posted to Instagram. And now, of course, my account is deleted, so I can't look it up. But let's say it's been about a decade. Nine years is a very safe answer. I have 24,000 followers. And now, over the last 18 months to two years, I've seen very little growth on Instagram. I was gaining followers, but I was also losing followers at a rate that my growth was nearly flat. Now, I've talked about that on my live shows. It's a little bit frustrating. I also saw a real drop in engagement on Instagram. Uh, and then there are the bugs, like my girlfriend who has post notifications turned on for me, doesn't consistently get notified when I post, or at least when I had a, an Instagram account to post to. But all of that aside, I still enjoyed using Instagram. It allowed me to reach a lot of people and share my photos in a nice, clean, simple grid and use the story functions to give these kind of quick updates of what I was up to, new videos that were posted or workshops that I was working on. Well, let's get to the story though. Last month, I was reviewing the Sigma 150 to 600 lens for Sony, and I found it to be an excellent lens. I happened to be teaching on a workshop in Moab, Utah, captured what I thought was a very nice picture of it. Sigma republished it on their Instagram with credit, and I thought, hey, this would be a great time to use one of those little social analyzer that reports to you your followers' gains and losses in real time. Now, my Instagram account is a business account. I think they call it a professional account now. So I have access to analytics, but they're pretty bare bone analytics, and I wanted something a little bit more exciting. So I did a quick search on the Google Play Store because I'm an Android user. And one of the things that came up had that had a decent rating and a decent number of reviews that seemed legitimate was an app called Insights, Follower Analyzer for Instagram. It had 4.2 stars, 13,000 reviews. I did a quick scan of some of the recent reviews and they seemed decent and legitimate. So I installed it, logged in with my Instagram credentials, hit the run button and saw that it was starting to work. About 20 minutes later, I picked up my phone and noticed that I was logged out of Instagram, so I went to log back in. Honestly, I can't remember the exact message it said, but basically it was something like my account had been suspended or locked for 24 hours for suspicious activity. Check back in 24 hours. I thought, okay, clearly this app just triggered something. In 24 hours, I'll get my account back. I stopped using the app. I uninstalled it. 24 hours go by. I try to log in again, and now the message is, your account has been terminated for violation of our services. And there's a little link that says, if you think this is a mistake, here's where you go. It doesn't even, it's not even a clickable link. You have to copy and paste it. That takes you to a little form. You fill in your full name. You say whether or not this is a business account. You put in your username, and they give you a spot to upload business documents. I have those. Photorec.tv is an LLC. It's a legitimate, so I uploaded all that information. And almost instantly, you get back an automated email that says, hey, we know you're having trouble. Here's what you need to do. And there's a little code in this email, and they tell you to write it down on a piece of paper and take a picture of yourself holding it up in clear light with your name, your full name, your username, and that code that I just said they sent. I did that three weeks ago. Nothing. Zero response. Not even a, we have received this email. Just kind of seems to go into a black hole. Now, I've completed that form twice more, sent the email back with the different code twice more. Nothing. Now, what a lot of people say to do is to try to run an ad on Instagram, and it won't let you because you your account is disabled. And then that gets you into the kind of help center ad space within Facebook. 
Um, and I did all that. And I actually was able to chat with a real person. That person was not very helpful. They were very apologetic. They made a lot of very uh, nice noises. But they said that the only thing that was available to me to do was the form that I had filled out. Now, based on my research, sometimes people get their account back in a couple of months. Sometimes people get it back in a couple of days. Sometimes they never get it back. Now, you might argue that I actually did violate the terms of service and I deserve to have my account deleted or disabled. I, you know, this is not even an app that buys or sells followers. It is simply to analyze. And I would argue that as a decade-long user of Instagram with never a single warning, I've never even left a comment on anybody's uh, account that has been flagged, that there should really be more of a process before your account is completely blasted to nothing. Especially if you're a business. It just seems like if you have these business building tools on your platform, that there should be a working system in place to allow you to appeal, I think. Now, so part of me, why am I making this video? Well, one, I want to give you some advice. Two, there's a little teeny part of me that says maybe somebody at Instagram will see this and go, oh, maybe we've screwed up. Let's go take a look at this guy. Or honestly, if it doesn't help me, maybe it helps somebody else that they'll put into place. I mean, I don't have any grand dreams that I'm going to move the world with this video, but at least it makes me feel a little bit better like I tried to say, hey, Instagram, can you fix your shit? All right, now let's move on to a part of the video that I think many of you might find a little bit helpful. Uh, if I could look back in time, here's some advice I would give you. One, if I could summarize this next bit of advice, actually, it's, it's really simple. Don't put all of your eggs in one basket, especially if this is part of your business. You see, once I joined Instagram, it very quickly became the place I uploaded most consistently to. I have a photorec.tv Facebook page. I've got a personal Facebook page too. We'll talk about that in a second. But engagement at that Facebook page for photorec.tv, it, it just felt a little low and declined. And soon it became lower than Instagram. And so I neglected it. And there was a period where I used some different services, including IFTTT to cross post to Facebook and Twitter. But sometimes that was just a link back to Instagram because I felt that my goal was to grow Instagram. And so I wanted to force people to come there and follow me there. But all of those links are now dead. So in hindsight, it would have been much better to always and consistently cross post, cross post, cross post. Now, for some of you, Instagram is a great record of your growth as a photographer or a catalog of your travels, a visual journey of your life. And losing that is a bummer. Maybe it doesn't have quite the same impact it does for someone like me that relies on it for a business but it still is a huge bummer. So again, I encourage you, and this is in no way sponsored by uh, IFTTT, but they have a handful of great options for kind of keeping a record of what you have posted to Instagram in other locations. Now, as I said at the opening, this video is brought to you by Squarespace, and really, honestly, it works so well on this video because I personally use Squarespace for Photorec.tv in my own personal portfolio, and now more than ever, I am so happy to have my photos displayed on my website. I control what they look like, I control what's around them, and their automated tools made it really easy to move my old sites to Squarespace. And now I'm on a platform that looks so beautiful, it's so easy to add content to, and it's secure. Many of you watching this are photographers. Squarespace provides beautiful portfolios and gallery pages. All you need to do is pick a template and drag and drop. It's really, really easy. But if for any reason you get stuck, they provide 24 seven customer support, actual people that you can talk to that can help you with your issues. If you wanna sell your work, the integrated e-commerce system is incredibly simple to set up. They also offer an online booking system, email campaign tools, and now I know email seems a little old fashioned, but it remains an excellent way to reach your potential customers. And the way the email system is integrated into Squarespace, the overall experience is excellent. They also make it really easy to buy a domain name. Squarespace truly is a fantastic all-in-one platform. You can try Squarespace for free for 14 days. No credit card required. Start at squarespace.com slash TV to save 10% off your first purchase. So about six or seven years ago, I started consistently exporting my images destined to Instagram to one folder. And from time to time, I back that folder up to Google Photos. Now, this isn't a complete record, but it's close. 
So that's one thing that you could do to make sure moving forward, if you lose your Instagram or whatever other social media tool that you're using, that's an important point here. Yes, I'm talking about Instagram, but this can happen to you on anything anywhere. When I talked about it most recently on my live show, somebody commented and said YouTube had done something very similar to a friend of theirs. So again, not only should you be cross-posting, but you should be keeping your originals in a kind of consistent location. But back to Instagram, captions, that's another story. I mean, I'm by no means an amazing writer, but I often enjoy sharing some of the deeper thoughts along with many of the photos I post, and those are gone. Uh, two things that, that have saved me, kind of. One, I usually write captions outside of Instagram, either in Google Keep or Google Docs because the autosave feature is useful, plus grammar checker, I need that. Um, but when I use those places, I just write the captions and then copy and paste them. There's no indication of what photo they belong to. I have been very slowly working on a book of some of my favorite photos that I've ever captured. I started that last year, and so I pulled the captions off Instagram and have those all in a nice document, but that's just for kind of, uh, I think, somewhere between 50 and 100 of my favorite pictures. Um, otherwise, the captions are just spread out through all these different documents, and again, there's no way that they're really connected to photos. And this was a question that I had on the live show the other day. Uh, Yes, I have posted many of these photos to my personal Facebook, but they're mixed in with family memories, political opinions. Yeah, I have those. It's just not as clean a record uh, of my photography as Instagram is. Now, prior to Instagram, back when I'm editing in Lightroom, my uh, rating system, you have to reach a three-star system. You have to reach a three-star. You have to reach three stars to share out to Instagram. That's, that's how I work. It, you know, if I was smarter, I'd be pasting the captions back into Lightroom and I'd be better about setting up a collection so I have one spot to go to see all of my photos and my captions. That's something that I'll try to do more of in the future, again, to whatever social media platform I'm posting to. Now the big question, if I get my account back, will I continue to use it? Probably. I mean, yeah, it really bums me out that we have these issues with Instagram and that I was just kicked off willy-nilly, um, but it still remains my favorite place to share photos and partly because I can reach many people. I'll just make sure that I am doing a better job of cross-posting and backing up my work. I really would love to see an alternate, you know, viable option to Instagram. There is Glass. Again, I've talked about that on my live show recently, glass.photo. You have to pay. That's something that I've heard a lot of photographers say they are willing to do um, when they complain about Instagram and the amount of ads. But honestly, I think when it comes down time down to plunk your money, uh, I think that Glass has a very uh, tough road ahead of it. It looks gorgeous. It's so very clean. Um, it's growing. But right now, it seems pretty quiet. But you could check them out. Um, you just you you don't feel like a product when you're using glass, and I think that's great. And as I said, email you can visit photorec.tv to sign up for my newsletter. That's all I have to say. I would love to hear your comments. Do you think this was fair? Have you heard it happen to somebody else? Do you have tips for how I can get my account back? You can leave those in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching. Bye bye. <laughs>